Hey guys, welcome to his TV. I was late by one minute. My apologies. Um, welcome. We do these shows on Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific. This has been uh, an awesome journey for me over the last uh, weeks and and months and years uh, for doing broadcasting. Um, I've been kicked off of YouTube. Uh, I've been kicked off of Twitter, Vimeo, and many more. Um, we're going to be making an announcement uh, on. Hold on, here, that's fine. Hold on. Sorry about that. I don't see that I'm live on his advocates.tv yet. Not to say that we're not, but I don't see it. So I'm trying to figure out what's up. Anyway, I know I'm live on YouTube, so I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to try to keep the things that offend the artificial intelligence listening to the keywords um to me call AJ all right so we're totally down we've we've had you know if, if you've got experience at getting a good stream uh system in place that does not have hiccups that does not get taken down um, we're, we're not able to even broadcast on Facebook right now. We're not able to broadcast on uh, multiple platforms. So it's, it's just kind of funny. We need a little bit of assistance from people that can get this station, his TV, up all the time uh, and, and so that we can talk freely. Um, shout out to uh, 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 the people that pushed us to do this. Uh, and, and, and we have a lot of people that pushed us to do this. Um, like I said, we've been downed off of, uh, many multimedia platforms or social media platforms. Um, but we have this now, uh, desire to create, and we have for the last 18 months to create our own social media platform. So coming in a few weeks, um, we're going to be making a big announcement, um, hundred percent free to everybody that wants to use the social media platform. Uh, but it's going to be a free speech platform and it's going to be for people that want to talk about whatever they want to talk about. Um, just, uh, just be kind. That's all we ask. Um, but I'm really excited about that because there's, there's a new wave of, of information, new wave of TV, new wave of media that's coming. Uh, I know that they control the internet. I know they can control pretty much anything they want. And I know that artificial intelligence is kind of behind a lot of the things that we're working on uh, or uh, that are taking away free speeches across this nation. So for me, um, I'm just happy to say uh, that when I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm getting all these messages. I'm just happy to say that uh, we've done something very profound, and that's giving people the ability to communicate without fear of repercussion, without fear of being taken down. And we're going to be working on all kinds of neat things in that regard. So I'll be making an announcement again in the next uh, probably week, week and a half to two weeks. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that because it took a long time to create and um, and it's here. And so we've been testing and testing and we're putting uh, and I'm, anybody that wants to help out from a, an administrative standpoint or has experience or wants to be involved. Uh, reach out to us at the phone numbers um, listed below or listed on the top on uh, youtube.com slash state of the union citizenship. Um, you can call toll free 844 his advo, 844 his advo, and just dial the numbers H I S A D V O and you'll ring us. Um, hit extension 705 uh, if you're interested in helping. But the technology is in place, but we're looking for people that want to branch us out and reach out. Uh, to the many and bring people over into our system so people have a place to communicate and, and not worry. Um, because right now, you know, uh, I can't even forward something that is of vital importance on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I can't forward anything, but on this platform, you'll be, you'll be able to afford anything. And and so family and friends, and, and you'll be able to communicate in groups and different things like that. And everybody will be able to uh, you forward one thing, it'll hit your entire group, and, and that'll be a, a neat thing. Um, but this show specifically is about state of the union citizenship or citizen versus a sovereign citizen. So I'm going to break down um, why it's critically important uh, 
that you listen because there's a lot of misunderstandings there's a lot of people that have tried freedom in a lot of different ways and they always generally get their butts handed to them it's very few people that try freedom and understand truly trust law and understanding what truly come out means and uh and 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 are trying to operate in that form and fashion on a daily basis for example even though i hold a license in my pocket it doesn't mean i've contracted with a state even though i hold uh and, and by the way i don't use a social security and i have not for i don't know 15 years um even though i have uh you know these different um what would appear as uh, an operation of being a normal person uh, from a citizenship standpoint i i i don't have a job per se where i'm an employee i'm not an employee of the united states or any corporation um everything that i do personally is in the private my goal isn't to be a <clears throat> um a domestic terrorist uh, i live peacefully in everything that i do my goal isn't to be a a tax protester um i pay every lawful tax and i'm not trying to use coy words by saying that uh but the fact remains is what a sovereign citizen is is they're probably number one on the domestic terrorist watch list um the word freedom is very scary to corporations that are masquerading as a a true nation or a true country and what do i mean by that uh, let's simply say this and i'm going to compare the two so people that are new and people that have heard um this before this is good it's reiteration training um and it's very important that you you are able to say this to other people so they understand and uh or you can just invite them to a video like this and they'll they'll get it um the declaration of independence and right there in the title is is the name of your country right united states of america no it's not the name according to the declaration that is the trust indenture that a bunch of uh men got together and affixed their signatures to or their mark to and declared freedom against uh england and uh then this ideology woke up across this nation and and it was absolute terror for the king because people had declared freedom and uh and in my opinion uh only the people that fixed their mark to that signature are a party to the document and that's just a fact okay you can't say you're a party to something that you haven't alleged yourself to allegiance is critical everything about the word of god everything about uh becoming a united states citizen which is a corporate citizen is about allegiance as a matter of fact that's across all the forms it's about allegiance um you're meant you're pledging allegiance to a flag which is the representation of your nation and so it's critical you understand who your nation is and and i'm not what, what i'm about to say i can listen i can prove in law I created a video called who are you on his advocates.org go to his advocates.org click on uh, the little uh, I can't remember, the magnifying glass um, and look up who are you it's a five-hour video but I show Supreme Court ruling after Supreme Court ruling and they're all shepherdized of the difference of a state citizen and the United States citizen and so what a state citizen is is somebody who's properly made allegiance to the state of which they were born on or to the state in which they now live on if you're naturalized and and by doing so you're not making allegiance to a corporate state equivalent you're not making allegiance to the united states equivalent and therefore you don't want to be a party to the united states corporation you just want to be a party to america so again declaration of independence it's trust indenture that's the name of the nation you think it says united states of america but it doesn't if you look at it it's a lowercase united and states of america are the two capitalized nouns this one's an adjective describing the two jurisdictions states of america see it's been always some degree or some amount of states and you want to equate what a state is is as a region a state is a body of people it's right there in their own law books and a state 
capitalized as a community of persons. So the reason why I want to get into the understanding of the law and the mechanics behind citizenship is because people want to tag on citizenship as something bad. It's basically whatever you define it as. Yes, they have their definitions. Yes, some of their definitions equate you to being the surety or the collateral or a subclass citizen. But when we do our definitions of what citizenship is, our citizenship is only in heaven. See, that's what makes being an American so special. And I briefly spoke on this a little bit about Romans 13. And I'm going to do it again tonight just because I want to touch on it. And then I'm going to do a specific show on it next week for the pastors just to get their minds um, corrected, making them, helping them understand, you know, where they are. Because in, in when you read um, Romans 13, give me one second, I'll be right there. You, you come to a conclusion as a pastor or as a Christian that no matter what position that this government is in, that you are to be obedient. There's literally pastors training people up on taking the... And, and, and that, to me, if you understood, which we'll get into the science behind all that stuff, not on YouTube, but I'm going to stay live on YouTube. I'm just going to not talk about that tonight. Um, but here it is, here it is, and I'm going to flip it in just a couple sentences because it says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. So immediately, pastors, you've placed the United States Corporation, uh, um, Title 28, subsection 3002, says the United States is a corporation. I can show you case law after case law showing you that the United States corporation is different than a state citizen. State citizens are what comprise America. State citizens are children of God that say the declaration, he is sovereign and we are free children of God. And that we are self-governed and we only obey his law. That's why we became the most special nation on the face of the earth. So immediately pastors, the pastor of 1776 got this. And I really want you to get this, too, because if America was founded with Romans 13 existing to the dispersion, which it was only written to the Romans, if America was found, that would make every single pastor across this nation who held a gun and fought against tyranny a complete anti-word pastor. That would make every pastor you know, mock Romans 13. But there is a point in which civil disobedience must take place, but we're going to get into it in a different show. Here's the point. For there is no authority except from God. And those who exist have been instituted by God, meaning those who have authority have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists God and what he has appointed. And whoever resists God will incur judgment. So pastors are constantly putting the United States as being the governing authority. Okay, here's the flip, and it's only a couple sentences, it's pretty easy. The people in the United States of America are self-governed. It is the most special thing that has ever been given to anybody on the face of the earth. A republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Being self-governed means you are ungovernable. Only by God. Only Him. Being self-governed means there is nobody over you. Being self-governed, here's the flip, means let every person be subject to the governing authority. Guess what? The federal government was instituted to serve me. The federal government government was instituted to serve me, the federal republic, whatever you want to call it. There is no authority except from God. Boom. Right here. I'm the authority. I'm self-governed. This is my king, dumb, whatever you want to call it. 
my authority. He is my king. There is nothing between me and God. That's what we have here in this nation. So, therefore, here's the flip, Pastor. Whoever the authorities, uh, whoever resists the authorities, meaning the federal government resists my will, my wishes, resists God, uh, re re resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. That's the flip. You've been preaching it wrong because you've been sold that we must be obedient to a corporation. You've been sold through your pastor's pastor's pastor, your friend's friend's friends. And that's not the case. I'm not a sovereign citizen. I'm not anti-government. I am so pro-American, it's ridiculous. I've given my life, fortune, sacred honor. I've given it all. I put it publicly on the line that I'm against any company, and I mean company, that does what these companies across the earth are doing. I'm against that. And it's okay. Guess what? They serve me. Now, there are some people known as United States citizens that serve them. Because they want to benefit rights and privileges, much like the Old Testament. They, when they had a king, and, it was, and his name was the Elohim, and Israel dwelt with the Almighty right there in the cherubim. That was the proper government that God formed. That's the government we have here in this nation if you are a state of the Union citizen, a state of being as a child of the Most High God. Straight up. And they did a complete and total sleight of hand, created a United States corporation, made everybody believe that the 14th Amendment was to free black people, but it was to enslave all people. And the word citizen in the 14th Amendment switched from being capitalized as important in the original Constitution to a lowercase citizen in the 14th Amendment. And you became a property and possession of the United States. We the people have the sovereignty of the king. We the people have nobody between us and the Father in heaven. This is why God says, come out. Because you're deleting the layer of corporations and bonds and contracts and surety and collateral statements. You're coming out. And this is why you're cut out of receiving the plagues of Revelations 18.4. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but I will at some point. I have in the past. But here's the sovereign citizen. It's the lukewarm guy with one leg in and one leg out, and he hasn't done anything properly with his contracts. See, this is what happens. The de jure sat down in 1860 when we went to war. The war was not about free and black people. It was about state rights. States were fed up. There was a bunch of states in the South that said, no more. You're not going to take upon our freedoms and they created actually another nation and they got their butts handed to them by the north and we went back under the control of the north the funding um i'm not going to get all the way through it i've done this so many times i really want to focus on the difference of the two because one is a free child of the most high god who's properly defined himself and his contracts are in order, and he's left nothing out there saying he's the surety and the collateral. The other one is walking around saying, I don't need a license to drive, has a suspended license, or got rid of the license but never removed his signature from it, or is driving around a car that there's no MSO, Manufacturer Statement of Origin, a car, listen to me, if you don't have an MSO on your vehicle, that means the manufacturer sent that MSO to the state. Even if you have title on your vehicle, that it's a certificate of title that the state gave you to hold. They own the car. How do you know that? Because you're required to register that car or they'll take it from you. 
If you hold the MSO, they have no authority to take anything from you. It belongs to you. That's a fact in law. Will they maybe try to seize or conquer that? That's depending on how fast you were going, depending on how much of a jerk you were to the officer, depending on if you even know what you're saying to law enforcement, or if you're treating them with kindness, respect, and just helping them to understand, hey, look, this is what's going on. A lot of these guys really, you know, they're not dumb. They might overreach. They might push a little too hard, but they're not dumb. Some of them are mean, but there's a whole lot of nice law enforcement officers out there. Some of them do, you know, profile. Got it. Some of them, guys, I'm telling you right now, they're, they're in a bad spot. They're in a pickle. They're being asked to enforce stuff they don't want to. And now the businesses are being asked to enforce rules and they don't want to. Artificial intelligence, working with a few bad men at the top, has figured out a way to turn the people against each other. It's genius. And using sovereign citizen instead of free-loving American. Using the flag as if it's a racial symbol. Using the men that freed this nation, the statutes, tearing them down and replacing them with Baphomets. Children, young adults, college students, I hope you all are watching this video. Listen, I really wish you would understand there has never been a socialized nation that did not turn into a communist nation, that did not oppress the people. They're starving. They're oppressed and they never succeed. Socialism never succeeds. Communism never succeeds. Sure, the Communist Party stay, and they're successful for a long time. They're the ones with the meat. They're the ones with the food supply. They're the ones not living in poverty, but everybody on the bottom. Look, doctors, medical doctors in Cuba drive taxis. It's more profitable. It tells you a lot. Socialism, communism does not work. And you want to argue capitalism. You want to argue the color of your flag. You want to argue white supremacy. You want to argue all of the things that you're being played. Man, you're being played. Okay? There is more racial divide done by false flags than you could ever imagine. If you don't know what a false flag is, look it up. Many of the images and of the men that you think that you see on TV being harmed or hurt, the ones that play out to major campaigns on the, uh, across the country, have already told, meaning their attorneys have already told the media, and it got shut out, that that man died two years before that event ever even happened. They're using dead people. They're using people, the same people on multiple different events, false flag events. If you don't know what that is, again... Go look it up. It's kind of scary where we're at as a nation because the youth, you know, your your every emotion is being read on your face. They know what turns you on. They know what turns you off. They know how to manipulate, make suggestions, make program you through a period of time right here all day long. You're constantly seeing another suggestion on your phone all day long. And then if that's not bad enough, you've got a professor that is training you that will give you, especially here in California, will give you extra credit if you go out with Antifa, a terrorist organization, or BLM, sorry, a terrorist organization. Good people in it some great concerns but a terror when you go around ripping up towns of people that didn't hurt you had nothing to do with you because you're being paid through george soros's website that's just a fact guys come on those are things you people need to start figuring out and learning and then and then completely flipping towns and throwing bricks through windows why so so 
Amazon, so Microsoft can go and buy up all of those businesses that you destroyed. You're only making them stronger and you're making your chances of succeeding in life weaker. I don't ever want to be one of those guys that's looked at as, as, as crazy. And, and it, this is kind of hard when you're putting your neck out. I'm a real estate broker and I'm putting my neck out for freedom. And I'm at this point where, you know, I understand the law better than the average bear. Let me give you an example. If the federal government had authority, no matter what, over every single person, where they can just go and arrest you, they wouldn't need to create proof of what the authority is over that person. What do I mean by that? Go read a warrant. Go read an indictment and just step into the cover page or the two pages that establish jurisdiction. They're all your contract with a corporation, one way or the other. They show you have a contract, one way or the other, with the corporation. Because they have to establish subject matter jurisdiction before they can get a warrant cleared. That means that company known as uh, the United States, listen to the next sentence very carefully, law enforcement, feds, everybody. The United States has exclusive jurisdiction in the District of Columbia alone. 9 U.S.C. 307H. 9 U.S.C. 307H. So think about that. Think about what I just said. If their jurisdiction was across border to border, the federal government, they can just go and make a warrant and hit the home. They don't need to prove subject matter jurisdiction over an individual. They can just go hit the home. Right? Guys, they're working towards those things. And they have broken so many laws, you know, with listening to us, with, with these FISA warrants. They have broken so many laws. It's getting to the point where we have to start questioning who's in authority. But... Here's the sovereign citizen. He doesn't deal with his contracts. He maybe is that long hair guy or that hippie girl with hair under her arms. Not saying hair under your arms is a bad thing. Not my preference. Up in the mountains together, in a tent, having a bonfire, burning their driver's license, burning their contracts. And not dealing with them. Letting their hair grow real long. Letting their beard grow real long. Coming back into town and getting arrested. For fishing in a lake that was belongs to the city. Because they don't know the difference of city property versus public land. Sounds funny. But here's a fact. Just to think about. If the federal government had autonomy over the entire United States. Why would the state need to convey land to the federal government. Schools, federal buildings, state buildings. Why would the state have to do that? Why does the federal government require you show a driver's license before entering a federal building to establish they have jurisdiction over you? They won't accept a passport. Listen to what I just said. Federal buildings will not accept a passport entering into that federal building. They want to know they have jurisdiction over every single person that walks in the, that front door. So how would you appear if there's a case brought against you? That's a good question, huh? Especially? Probably. So being a state citizen is just saying, I don't agree. And I found a loophole, and it's called Amer being an American. It's being what our founders were. And here's the most famous line I think I've coined in the last two or three years. Ben Franklin was not a United States citizen. He never was. He was a Virginianite. Or New Hampshireite. Or Connecticut. I don't know. 
but he was a state of the Union citizen. And that's what he fought, and that's what he gave us. It's genius. And being a state citizen, there is nothing between us and God. And that's the protections that we have. It's the most sweet, special protections. And basically, every person across the world has the same thing. You know why? Because a corporation cannot do business with a living man, which is a whole nother thing. Corporations can only do business with like entities, other corporations. So they've created these sub-corporations. I'm going to show you right now. Here's a sub-corporation. Right here. His name is Kelby. Thomas Smith, all capitalized. Okay? That's a corporation. This corporation actually was originally a, uh, a birth certificate or a live born record right here. Okay? This was submitted to the state because the mom, and I've shown this on my videos, my mother... It says mother and father on the top lines and down on the signature line it says parent or informant. Parent means judicially decreed guardian. Informant means one who turns one over. So the state is now contracting with my mom with an understanding she's a judicially decreed guardian who's turning the property over to the state. State then takes this property, puts it on 32 pound watermark banknote paper. It says Pacific banknote paper in one of these corners. It's got a QCIP number on it. It's registered in the county and it's called an Inslee Just Trust. It's known as a registered organization under Uniform Commercial Code 9. This is the United States citizen who the corporation can do business with. You unknowingly have placed yourself to be the surety and the collateral for this guy. This is an artificial person. Sounds crazy? It's absolutely 100% verifiable in the law. Because they can't do it any other way. Corporations cannot do business with living men or women. Rundle versus Delaware. One shepherdized Supreme Court ruling, which means it still stands in law today. So how is it that the United States, a federal corporation with exclusive jurisdiction in the District of Columbia, is able to do business with a living man? I hold an office, I don't, you do, to that artificial person. And it goes deeper. So we have a structured program that deals with all that. But the problem is, is most people only deal with a little bit of it. You, to get into the, I say this like this, sorry, to get into the belly of the beast, you had to go through a lot. You went through a lot of contracts. You did a lot of signing driver's licenses, social security cards, guns, applications, uh, marriage licenses, all kinds of stuff. And it takes you to recontract with them properly as a state citizen. See, they don't put even state citizen on any of their applications. They want you to be the surety. They want you to fall. They want you to think you have to do everything that they say. They want you to believe that. And there's no such thing. The only thing or person or entity that you need to listen to unequivocally is him period. So that sovereign citizen is trying to be free and needs a little extra help. But they came against freedom-minded people and they made that guy who's trying to be free number one on the domestic terrorist watch list. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Those types of people, there are a few dangerous ones. There's a few dangerous people in everything. But those type of people have killed maybe 15 or 20 people 
since the inception of the word sovereign citizen over 15 years ago. Drug dealers, gang members, the federal government, sad to say some police officers have done way more damage. And there are murderers out there, guys. We live in a really deplorable society right now. There are. But why is it that Al-Qaeda, that ISIS, that MS-13, that these gangs are not number one on the domestic terrorist watches? Why is it this small, freedom-minded, freedom-loving group who maybe just didn't get it right, their contracts right, why are they on there? The same reason why they want you to believe you have to do everything that they say. Because the cat's out of the bag. You can go back under the trust, which directly is under God. Or you can stay as the surety and the collateral for the United States so that you can have benefits, rights, and privileges of being whatever. You don't lose anything over here. Collateral. Everything gets restructured so that you're the beneficiary and no longer the United States, the beneficiary. Guys, the most important thing to understand is that nation still exists in law. Because the corporation cannot exist at all unless the nation itself exists. And so what they've done across the world is laid corporations all over and made people think that it was synonymous with the original and then they got people, just like they did in the Old Testament, lazy people didn't want to be self-governed anymore like the original Israelites under God. They demanded a king. And what does the Bible say? It says God was grieved. He was their king. Why would he, be, why would he say he was grieved? Because, man, they, he gave them everything. He fought their battles for them. All they had to do was carry him into battle. But they got lazy. They didn't want to be self-governed. It was too difficult. So God responded with Saul. Or a guy named Obama. Or a guy masquerading like Biden. Just saying. But guys, pastors, in closing, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. In America... I'm the governing authority. And anybody that resists that will incur judgment. They will incur judgment for resisting governing authority. Mine. And every other state citizen, child of the Most High God, who has come out. That's all I got to say. That's the difference of a state of the Union citizen and a sovereign citizen. You don't want to be a sovereign citizen. It's an oxymoron. Doesn't exist in the law. You don't want to be an American national. Doesn't exist on the Declaration of Independence. You want to be a child of the Most High God. You want no contracts between you and a corporation. And you also don't want to get pulled out by your hair driving down a freeway, playing games with a driver's license or with an unregistered vehicle. There's a difference of a car and a vehicle in the law. There's a difference of traveling and commercial traveling or commercial driving. There's these things that they've done to trick people into thinking it's all the same. And it's not. I get it. We want to fight for every single thing that's right. I want to be able to travel without a license, of course. But explain that to every law enforcement officer. Why don't you just have a license with no contract attached? It's pretty simple. We teach people at hisadvocates.org how to do it, but not do it in a form and fashion that insults the people we live around. We want to be loving to our neighbors because this nation is so divided. It's crazy divided. And we got to be able to bring this nation back together and get these kids and get us off the phones and get us back into an ideology where um, we're doing it right. So God bless you guys. Tomorrow, 4 p.m. Q&A, hisadvocates.org if you're interested. Thursday, episode number three of State of Being. You're not going to be, you're not going to want to miss it. Um, I think it's U.S. citizen or 
U.S. Inmate or something like that. We created a killer title thanks to our executive producer, uh, Tracy. Um, you're going to love it, and we're going to talk about the things that keep you locked up as and in, in that understanding of jurisdiction, much like we did tonight. So you don't want people to miss it. God bless. We'll see you Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific on State of Being. And that's on a, uh, you want to download K4HD. It's an application. It's a radio um, where you can go online and watch it. Um, but it's uh, blasted out on this app so that we can just touch you on your phone real quick. God bless. Have a great week. Thanks.